This presentation contains an introduction and tutorial of the Easy Sextant smartphone app. The Easy Sextant app is used for navigating in open waters without a GPS, sextant, or internet connection. Android versions 10 and higher and a camera with a wide field of view are recommended. The app was tested in real-world conditions up to 40 miles off the east coast of the USA on a 38-foot sailboat. Over 100 sightings were made in various sea conditions over a two-year period. Average absolute sighting errors of less than 4.4 nautical miles were achieved. These values are commensurate with sextant navigation. These accuracy results were measured using an LG in a Qubit smartphone. Your accuracy will be contingent on several factors such as, camera field of view and resolution, lens distortion, and skill in taking sightings. If your phone has multiple cameras, the app will choose the one closest to 90 degrees. Navigating without a GPS is achieved by using your smartphone camera to make celestial sightings. To achieve accurate sightings, a simple one-time camera calibration is required. Calibration is covered at the end. The positions of the Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars are accurately calculated with the VSOP87 ephemeris. You can also use your sextant to make a sighting, then use the app's built-in almanac and plotting tools. Sighting results are automatically plotted as running fixes on a latitude-longitude grid for easy navigation. A sailboat symbol shows your estimated position. Note that no celestial navigation skills are necessary. A shoreline map of the world is displayed after a one-time download from NOAA.gov. Once downloaded, an internet connection is no longer required. Waypoints can be added using the pull-down menu or pressing on the display. Begin using the Easy Sextant by pressing the plus button to enter a starting position. The date and time is automatically filled out using the phone's clock. If there is a loss of GPS, this time may be an error and can be set with an external clock. Note that an error of 1 second results in a quarter mile error in your position. Next enter a known starting location in the dialog box. This could also be your last known position, for example from the ship's log, or your best estimate of where you are. Press plus again to enter a dead reckoning or a new estimate of your position. Enter your heading, speed, or distance. The set and drift can also be entered if known. The dead reckoning symbol is displayed as a half circle. To improve the accuracy of your position, make a sighting by pressing the sextant button. The camera calibration results are displayed showing the estimated sighting error. Also displayed are the altitudes and azimuths of the celestial bodies at the current time. As with a sextant, accuracy is improved if a celestial object moves around 90 degrees in azimuth between sightings. And the altitude, that is the height above the horizon, is greater than 20 degrees to reduce refraction errors. Next select the celestial object from the pull-down menu. If you are using your sextant, press the sextant button to enter your sighting information. Otherwise press the camera button to make a camera sighting. Hold the camera such that the celestial body and horizon are in the picture. You can lighten or darken the image as needed. When satisfied with the image, press the shutter button to take the picture. In the dialog box enter your height above the water. Only fill in the latitude and longitude if used for calibration. Zoom in and tap on the sun. The app will try to center a circle on it. Use the arrows on the bottom to center if necessary. To achieve better accuracy, press the fine tune button to move the circle one pixel at a time. Depending on your phone, a pixel error may cause more than a two nautical mile error in distance. Press the green check mark when done. Now zoom in and tap on the horizon. Use the fine tune, arrows, and rotation buttons to accurately place the dashed line directly on the horizon. You can press the clear button to clear the cursors and start over. Press the green check mark when satisfied with the sighting, in other words the sun circle and horizon lines are within a pixel. Here is an example.
After your sighting, a line of position or LOP is shown on the display near the dead reckoning. With only one sighting, you are somewhere on the line of position. A sailboat symbol indicates your estimated position is closest to the dead reckoning. If you made a mistake, or the sighting results seem to be in error, press the undo button and try sighting again. As you sail on, periodically add dead reckonings by pressing the plus button. When possible, make sightings after a dead reckoning by again pressing the sextant button. With multiple sightings, the LOPs are extrapolated to the current position, where the lines of positions intersect as a running fix or RF. The running fix is the best estimate of your position. You can press on a navigational symbol to display its information. Calibration is required to achieve sighting accuracy. Only 5 to 10 sightings are needed for calibration. For each image, enter an accurate latitude and longitude. Use latitude and longitude values from a chart plotter or VHF radio. Most phone GPSs are not accurate enough out at sea. Make a sighting as before, ensure the cursors are within a pixel, then press add to calibration at the bottom. A status pop-up will appear at the bottom of the screen. If the calibration error seems excessive, you can undo by pressing the undo button on the main display and try again. Sightings taken on the beach can also be used to calibrate the camera. The latitude and longitude can be found using Google Earth for example. If the calibration errors are excessive, that is, greater than 10 nautical miles, you can recalibrate. First go back to the main window. From the pull-down menu, select clear calibration. Then go back to the sighting screen by pressing the sextant button. Press the last button to cycle through the last 10 images. Each last image contains the time and position when taken. You typically don't need to modify this information unless incorrect then press OK. Position the cursors and press add to calibration. The stored images can be used for calibration at any time. Or you can take new images to recalibrate. Here are some tips to improve accuracy. First, practice making sightings. Even with fast shutter speeds, holding the camera steady will help. Place the cursors as accurately as possible by zooming in and use the fine tune button. Finding a dark location out of the sun will help placing the cursors. Transcribe the latitude and longitude from a GPS source quickly but ensure they are correct. A 1 degree error is 60 nautical miles in distance. Remember that you can clear the calibration table and recalibrate previous images using the last button. As you practice, the errors should decrease to their true values.